All right, guys, so uh, I am here with Jeff Shang. Jeff is a, I would say, internationally renowned uh, LGBT activist. And um, you were a professor, and you're a photographer, and Jeff's work on, I would say, LGBT challenges in society has been featured on what Time Magazine, LA Times, New York Times, all the all the times. I feel like this is what Oprah must feel like, you know, when I when Hopefully she, when she <laughs> <She's> somebody. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's talk about the LGBT community and and sort of the plant community. Yeah, of course. Um, I would have to say that the LGBT LGBT people have a very pronounced presence within the pre the, the plant community. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say definitely. I mean, I've met a lot of people who identify as part of the LGBT plant world. The plant world gives us a really great chance to find common ground with each other, right. but also um, I think a lot of people are hesitant to bring to the table, say, LGBTQ identities or race identities or activism in any sort of social justice way because there's just a lot of pushback sometimes from some people. You know, you have the plants not politics people who uh -huh. come in, right, very strongly. And I think that that's created a lot of tension um, in some cases. You know, you've done two big photography series on LGBT community and their challenges in high school sports mm -hmm. and and the military, right? Yeah. Um, and if you look at those, you know, high school sports is a, a commonality yep. that those students who are those athletes share. The military, usually there's like a brotherhood, a commonality there. Do you feel like it's, you know, different with plants? I would like to think that the challenges are less within the plant community. So in the military, for example, for a while, you couldn't be um, LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual. Um, and then for a while, you couldn't also be transgender. And during those times, people who were, because they were very visibly oppressed, found each other okay. and really supported one another, right? Because they um, felt a sense of discrimination that was very obvious and overt, right? But in the plant world, you don't really have that. You don't, I, yeah, I agree. Right? And because of that, I, I just think that it's a, like a lost opportunity for people to still Oh. bond over these things, right? Like, yeah. like if there's something that is um, transphobic or even like anti-LGBT going on, like people, I just don't see a lot of activism in the plant world. I would like to think that in the plant community, we're all a lot more open and accepting, uh, yeah. given that I just feel like there's there's just so many LGBT people in the plant community. Uh, the My first plant friends, yeah. right, were, were LGBTQ. Um, the, when my channel started, the first you know supporters of my channel uh, were those same you know plant friends, and uh, I, I feel like it's just so um, it's so hard to be in the plant community without knowing um, someone who is, who identifies as LGBTQ, and and also, I mean, I feel like it would be very difficult to to have overt discrimination within the plant community unless I'm, I'm wrong with with that. Again, I think it's one of those things where if people have anti-LGBTQ um, beliefs, or you know, somebody also I identify equally as being Asian, right? Like, right, right. right that like being um, if somebody is if somebody said thinks that saying kung flu is okay, right? Like this whole time when people thought that was okay, okay, right? right, right. It's only a joke, right? And then now grandmothers are getting killed, like in, in San Francisco, because of the kind of rhetoric that we see, right? It's not lost. It, it, it's pretty clear I have fairly left views on the world. I, I think I think you're. I do agree with you that there is not as much activism in regards to the LGBT community in, within the plant community as there could be. I think that last year we saw a lot of uh, uh, you know pro black black lives, um, you know pro uh, black shop owners, black mm -hmm. businesses. I think there was a big movement on that. Uh, within the plant community that I, you know, I, is that your point that like there could be more it's more and there's also this idea that somehow we've there is a there is a very large part of the plant world that is still very closed off to listening to people right that i think that politics somehow and, and this is a really weird thing to think about but it feels almost as if um people don't want to engage with the idea that you can be social justice oriented and also in the plant world. Like there's, a, there's like a very strong view of like, no, we don't want politics involved with plants. Like I just wanna look at pretty pictures of plants. So let's say that, you know, this is a question that I think 
Um, it's, a, it's a sort of deep question, right? You have two different sellers. Mm -hmm. One is a seller that uh, has said anti-LGBTQ or maybe anti, like has said maybe racist comments in the okay. past, right? Let's say there's a seller there, okay? Mm -hmm. But let's say you have another seller that doesn't say those same viewpoints, but perhaps believes them, right? Right, right. right. in their own politics or beliefs. Right, okay. Right. Do you not buy from one seller and not buy from the other, right? Or does it, or does it not even matter, right? And these are the kinds of questions. And if it doesn't matter, then like how, how much social justice can you have in plants, right? If, if you're, if the one act you do in the right. plant world is selling and trading plants, right, right. and you can't even, and you leave that equation out, then right. but you're not, you're not being you're not being an activist, you're, right? I guess so, right? I mean, this is a rhetorical right. question, yeah, right? This yeah. is like a, this is a thought experiment, right? right. That is, is, plays out in real time with a lot of people. Right. Let's say a plant you really, really want is being offered at a, um, at a good rate or whatever, at a good price point that you can afford. And, and suddenly, you know, I think, that, I think this is like this question that a lot of people I know sometimes struggle with. Would you really, and, and there's also two sides of it. One is the, the easy one, I think, is the one which is the person is just like outright racist, right? Like has said, right. has said racist things or, or homophobic or transphobic things. That one's easier for some people. Yeah. The harder one has been the one where they may have those views or they have those views, but they just don't vocalize them. Right. And I think that the struggle for me has been for that second case, can we use the plant community to dialogue about these things? Right? So like, like this is the part that I think is, like, I would say, and this is sort of a tricky question, it's like, it's like for the, for the person who is in that second case, who may have very different political views than I do, right. um, is there a space where we can get to know each other and they can eventually come to some common ground on, on how I feel about social right. justice? And, and the hard part about, <clears throat> and I'll say this bluntly, the hard part about politics today is that it's so polar. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people would think of my response there and be really cynical and be like, that's impossible. Like somebody who believes that the election was stolen, right, right. is never, you're never going to be able to come to a room with them and, right. you know, be able to come to an agreement about something, yeah. right? I, um, I, I sort of agree and I, I also sort of disagree. I think that like if you met that person one, like one on one in a room and sit down with them, I feel like a, a lot of times you may come to a, a more neutral ground, but the way the world is nowadays, and partly I feel like things why things so are polarizing is that um, people say things, do things online that they would never do in real life, right? Like your responses are more blunt, they're mm -hmm. quicker, you're quicker to dismiss things, right? Like in a, if you're sitting with a person in a room, like where we are, we, we talk stuff out, right? Yeah, like completely. online we have like, you, you know, I, I misinterpret your text, I misinterpret your font, you know, like you capitalize things and I think you're screaming at me, like well, I block you or I don't respond, you know, yeah. like I just, I just close you off. So I feel like, you know, with our, our culture these days, even though, um, you know, FaceTime, like the internet has definitely allowed us all to be quote unquote closer during a pandemic where we have to be separate, uh, it also sort of closes off uh, I would say genuine yeah. conversation. Oh, completely. Yeah. It, and that's the hardest part for me about the plant world. So it's like de definitely a double edged sword in so many ways. It's like so much of it is done online now. Right. Right. Because of the pandemic as well, it's forced it online. And that medium has made it even harder for us to come to any agreement. Right. You know, so, so all back to like that question of like the LGBTQ community. It's like, I mean, some of the most like terrible harassment and bullying has come from other LGBT people to me, mm. right? And I kind of just go, whoa, like how, how is this even possible? And I realize that they don't even, that's for them, the online space has probably become so toxic and, and such a, not a great place to engage with a lot of plant stuff mm -hmm. that I think that it's, it's been hard to really think of that space as a great avenue for any sort of social justice stuff. And that's sad, right? Somebody who really, who, who, who spent two decades of my life like working on LGBTQ issues. And the book I'm writing right now, 
looks at social movements on the internet and LGBT rights, right? This is like the, the project that I'm working on um, from my PhD dissertation. And, you know, I, I think about all the amazing gains that the LGBTQ community has made right. and the internet being a really big part of that right. and really helping put people together who, you know, as I said before earlier to you, if you were in the South and you were a teenager and you were trying to come out in an earlier era without the internet, who would you who would you find as a, as a support network, right? right? And today you've got you can just Google like resources, right? Like right. let's look at the local Glisten chapter, let's look at the local Key Flag chapter, let's look at like who else might be a support network for me. Um, and strangely enough, we've moved on to a place where the internet's now become like a place of toxicity, right? That like right. that it's a terrible right. like if you're a young LGBT person in the plant world. And you don't feel like your collection is great, right? That you feel you have to have, you have to go into debt to buy a plant to make people accept you. Right. I, I just question that as a space that's very great. I think if everyone just realized everyone is here because they love plants. Yeah. <laughs> and how do we talk with each other and talk to each other in a way that respects that? Kind of bringing it back to like, if we were an in-person society, and I knew that so-and-so in the society might not share my exact political views, but they know that I'm out. They know that I'm uh, you know, a non-white person. They know that I have um, social justice views on uh, economics and about equality with other issues as well, that by getting to know me, by trading plants, by engaging about like plant care tips, that they might not be so hostile to my viewpoints, right. Right? right? To me, that feels like a great first step. So there's like a few Bay Area groups mm -hmm. for plants, and um, the one I'm most involved in is a space mm -hmm. that takes a very social justice-oriented view on things. And I think that um, over time, I actually wouldn't be surprised if more of these uh, happened, especially as groups opened up, as we opened up more after the pandemic and, and local trading becomes a thing, kind of like what I said before, like, I want to know that I'm safe going to the door of somebody and trading a plant, right? I want to know that I'm not being discriminated against um, for whatever, either my sexual orientation or my racial identity. Um, and I think more and more local groups will probably start taking similar sort of, you know, not necessarily like we want to be social justice warriors, but like... Right. Tolerance. You know, not even tolerance, but just like safety. Right? Safety. It's more like an issue of safety. Right? Like if you can think about, you know, one of the really uh, eye-opening things for me in the pandemic has been two things. One is uh, hearing more from my black friends about safety in a way that I remember as a young, very young LGBT person feeling. Right? The idea that there was a certain time where going to a gay club, you could, there could be violence easily outside of it, going in and out of the club. Um, this is in college for me, like when I was in college in Boston, for example, right? You knew that there was a danger because yeah. of who you were. And I didn't really revisit that danger. Um, and part of it was because the LGBT um, world got more accepted. People became more accepting of LGBT right. people, right? right. Um, I mean, I remember when Matthew Shepard was killed, for example, things like that, right? Like, but my black friends started to tell me some of, like, this, the fear they have about going to a door, a stranger's door at night and knocking on the door. And, and being hurt because of of what they look like. Yeah. Um, that didn't become reality until like my friends really, s my black friends were like, this is my reality, right? right? Like if I'm, I'm in a plant group and I'm trading plants and what if I accidentally knock on the wrong door? Right. You know, and I didn't really feel this until maybe like when a lot of the anti-Asian violence started happening um, in the past year, it suddenly I didn't feel safe either, right? Like I suddenly was like, Wow, like actually being in public and certain when people are being, you know, hurt in in San Francisco, that was so weird for me, right? But you know, and I think like I only talk about this because it's sort of like as we open up again and we do these in-person trades, there are practical safety concerns, you know, for people who are um, LGBTQ, non-white, in trading lines. Talking to you and hearing how much you stress safety. Right? It's, it's something, like you said, you've experienced back then. Different communities are experiencing now. Uh, but I feel like a lot of people, uh, and I would include myself in this, is that safety was, has never been a consideration. Like, I have never, uh, 
like just just like that going to a plant or trading a plant or someone to coming to my house and picking up a plant uh, safety has has not been an issue um, so it's it's good to get that perspective mm-hmm. you know either from you or from others that uh, that fundamentally um, it's more about tolerance like you know it's more about just accepting people it's about that people are getting hurt and I'll tell you where it really started to come into play it's like the, the changes in the plant world that we've been talking about part of it is as newer people come into the plant world many of whom you might not know like before I would venture to say you didn't have to worry about safety when you knew everybody really well right right, right? right, right. but when you're in this like large uh, group of a thousand plus people and the admins are just adding people without properly vetting somebody you don't know who you're letting in to a local plant group and the other issue too is, is the price of the plants. The biggest thing I've heard in the past year has been about theft, mm-hmm. right? And I think yep. that, um, and it's weird because when we talked about doing this video, I actually like part of the reasons because I'm moving, where I'm like, I'm fine doing this because by the time this airs, I'll be in a different location. Right. And the number one concern I have was plant theft of all things, right? right. And so imagine showing up with like a plant that's hundreds of dollars to someone's door. That's like a, that's, you could get, uh, yeah, there's a lot that could happen, right? So safety today, I think, is very important for people. Um, I mean, I've gotten to the, it's also why when you ask, I I tend to like to trade plants with people I know and really vet people. And, you know, of course people ship plants and and when you ship plants, you don't have to worry about that. But I'm I'm really saying these local groups, but the local groups are such a great opportunity to, to really come to common ground with people. Do you do you think that there's um, a responsibility on moderators or group leaders? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I think that like I think it's really naive to be a moderator or an admin of a local group and not realize these concerns. I think especially in a world, and this is the stuff that I study, I read research on, that there is a collision of the online and real worlds that often that sometimes ends in really bad things, right? I, I mean, we can even talk about like the gay community, like online dating. People have been murdered, right? Like when they when they get catfished and drawn with a hookup app profile in the wrong place. Like I know this, like this is something that's in in my head, right? That we hear about a lot from the community, unfortunately. And they're also, I mean, you're in a Bay Area, which is known for being more. Oh, okay. that's the thing, right? Yeah, like, right. I live in a very progressive open super, area. Yeah, super progressive, yeah. And I'm still super cautious. Yeah. Because you know that the world, unfortunately, has some bad actors in it. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, I think you have to just be really careful, like, if you admin a local group to really be conscious of your members. And it's just the idea that you can do just plants and not take into these take these into consideration is, is a little naive for me. I would say that I, I would admit that I'm in the more naive group. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, I think it's not from, I don't think it's from a, um, a place of bad intention. I would say it's from a place of more like ignorance, mm-hmm. right? It's a, uh, you have experiences and concerns that I am not aware of, right? And it's hard for me to understand something that I don't understand, right? Without, without like an open dialogue. Uh, so it's very easy for me to say, and I'm sure other people as well, like, let's just keep the plants, the plants, mm-hmm. right? Like, let's just talk about plants. Let's keep politics out of this. Um, but, but, you know, like now you've definitely enlightened me with the whole safety concern. And when it's safety, it, it should matter, right? It should matter yeah. to, to all of us. Luckily, we haven't had a really bad incident yet, right? right. But all it takes is one bad incident. And it's it's I, I it's not. I, I'm like now that I've you know with after talking you know talking to you, it's not that hard to imagine a oh, bad incident. Yeah. Right? Like I mean, you're talking about plants that you know they're not worth like thirty bucks, fifty bucks. We're talking about some plants that are worth hundreds, if not thousands, mm-hmm. of of dollars. And when you put that in an environment or in a context with sort of any sort of discrimination or hatred um, or intolerance. People have been hurt for way less. Yes. Right? Yeah, completely. Um, yeah. And that is, you know, and I used to mod in a group. I used to mod in the Bay Group too, right? And this was the number one concern that we had was safety, right? Was ensuring member safety. And I don't think people 
uh, really uh, recognize how important of a job that is in these online spaces, right? And I think that like in some of the national groups too, like there's a whole hands-off approach with things. Um, and I guess in those cases, the worst the worst that can happen is you get ripped off or some, you know, people, we hear that a lot, right? Like someone didn't follow through on their plant or it's like a scammer, or et cetera, et cetera. In the local groups, when you do in-person stuff, right? The, the risks are just much higher. Mm -hmm. And I think because the explosion of the plant world has happened, of the online plant world has happened almost in the pandemic, right. as we reopen up and as more local groups start to form, I, I, that is my where my concern would lie is to make sure that people don't re people realize there is like a valid, you know, and we have a thousand plus people in these Bay Area groups, right? right? That's yeah. a lot of people. You have a very a very strong community. Yes, um, but it's also great mod. I mean, great moderating, right? right? Great sort of yeah. tabs on making sure the people who come in are real and yeah. you know that's that's just a it's a volunteer labor. It's a hard job. Yeah, it's very eye opening to me, given the the strength of the community that you have in the Bay, the Northern California area, um, the passion of the, the, the plant, you know, people, as well as how progressive this, this area really is, for you to still have these concerns is very eye-opening for, for me. I guess I'll put it this way. There are some people in the local plant group who I adore, who are really like what we're talking about. Like these are people who I don't mind trading or selling a cutting of a plant for much, much less than market value because they, to me, are people that I just really value, right? Um, and I don't really want to make money off my friends. That's right. just something I just don't, don't like to do. Um, but that's been formed because of a really nurturing environment in which you do build trust with these people that you get to know online, right? Like during this interview, I just walked, you know, I walked the parking lot, handed off. So plants of somebody, right? And it's just totally normal, right? That they, and and granted, most people are like that. I'm not saying you have to, you know, I'm not saying like we're, we're a society full of like murderers and mm -hmm. sociopaths or whatever, right? But like, I'm also saying that um, that all you need is one bad apple, right? right? right. And that's that's what I think, yeah. And I, I realize that that's part of the, oh gosh, how do I put this? It's like, it's almost like in the most liberal places, you also, because you you know it's special, and you know it's, you know, you also realize, no, it can happen here too. Right. You know, bad stuff can happen here easily.